with John Shorten Whanu and talking about some of the important talk for you and I. Each week I get to have this really choice conversation. We talk about so many diverse things, John, you know, and you just never know. Sometimes it's that organic space that actually takes us to places that we don't know uh, where we're going until we get there. Well, you know, if I didn't go to Horike Primary way back in the 60s with you, I wouldn't have the blessings of 2023 with you. So, you know, that link that uh, started us off in that tare tare world to this tare tare world, it's a blessing. And the importance of being the tare tare world we've come from, eh, John? You know, we, like your, all our fathers, we didn't have lots. Uh, we, you know, we, our main transport was the boat or the horse. Uh, our main kai was the kumara from the garden or the ika, the karawaka, or the, the tuna or the karuhu. And, uh, you know, when you think about resilience, that was part of building that resilience into us now as the um, almost 70 year olds who are still here and are still able to contribute to the great things uh, that we need to in support of our mokopuna, John? Well, you know, we've quantum leap from the cart and the horse to the horse on its own, and now we've got drones. So, you know, uh, we can get from A to B no matter which way, and, you know, we've lived in that space. So isn't it a wonderful world that we live in? It sure is, John, and appreciation is the thing that's so important for us. Eh? To be able to appreciate those things that at that time when we were talking to you, you sort of, I wanted to get away from it all. I, I, I couldn't wait to leave home. You couldn't wait to um, get that job, that dream job that I thought uh, I was going to get, but realized in a very short time that actually uh, the dream can sometimes turn into a nightmare. That world that I thought was was actually very different to the way it was perceived as a, as a tamariki, John. Well, you know, I can parallel exactly what you said because from the day I left the uh, Okaiho District High School, I walked a couple of hundred meters to Okaiho Post Office and I looked forward. I never ever looked back. I never went to live back in Utakura and I kept living somewhere else. And, you know, the one thing that I can never forget is where I was first raised. And, you know, so that's where the people made me who I am. Without those people, I couldn't connect. And so, you know, it has a place in the way we live. It's funny that, John, that I go to our tangihanga, to many of the places that we were raised, but when uh, the resilience and the the wisdom and the knowledge and the things that actually drove our societies back in the time when our old people were there. And, you know, it, I, I sometimes get, you know, quite moki moki, John, because those things are no longer there. There's a whole new generation. And I suppose it's a thing of being older. It's a lot harder to connect. And you tend to um, uh, cherish those memories uh, that were when we had such resilience and such car within our small communities. Lots of our small communities have actually almost died. Many of the people have left. And uh, one of the, I guess, one of the important tuck is that how do we encourage to bring our people home? But what happens when they get back to our Tūranga wai? Well, you know, one of the things that um, doesn't get discussed enough is the place in which you began. Now, in our particular uh, um, hokianga itself, steep in history, Utakura, uh, Mangataipa, all the Horeke, those places had huge history. And if it hadn't been for a place, we wouldn't be able to be who we are. So, you know, it was many, many generations of people once lived in these places. Admittedly, things have changed. We've been diverted into suburbia, as we put it. And I think somewhere we've forgotten our identity, we've forgotten our place to call home. And that's the thing that um, never remember. We all come from different places, but it's the place that makes the difference that had all those people that we once remember. Mm. John, one of the things I feel a bit pody about is that I know we were raised at a time where um, our communities were full of marakai. There was huge marakai and there was the collective capacity to work together that gave us the sustenance that was important for us that, at that time when we depended on the whenua, we depended on the sea, we depended on the natural resources to sustain our families. And, uh, 
you know, I, I, I'm a keen gardener myself. Uh, uh, never, there's never been a, a year that we've missed having a nice big mara, but it's very different for lots of our whanau who weren't raised in those ways. Well, I think one of the things that we cannot uh, ignore, seeing is believing. And I think when you go to suburbia, you haven't got that opportunity that you and I as tare tare kids growing up in Horeke, Mangataipa, Mangamuka, we saw and we had our hands, we got them panparu and we got our feet tapa and all those experiences, we came from those basic uh, elements of life. And uh, isn't it wonderful that we revert back to what we saw, to what we uh, discovered and uh, our generations of today don't have that opportunity. Yeah, I was uh, out at the water a couple of days ago. I went down to Rangi Point and gathered some of the round cockle men, and they were so rika. Uh, the karu I was out as well. You know, karu is quite uh, uh, quite a, um, a scarce uh, thing these days, but I found a little karu patch down at Kōkū. I was able to ke- uh, catch, uh, able to pick a, enough karu for my big sissy who loves karu. And of course, when you eat that kai, it also brings back the memories of those times. We were actually one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the best karu pickers in Horiki. Was back in the time when you had the milk tin. Uh, you got your milk powder in the tin, and of course we'd we'd fill that milk powder tin up in no time, John. Well, you know, Horeke, Opera, um, those two uh, specific places uh, down towards Motukure before you get to the Waimau River and back to Horeke before you get to Utakura, those mud flats were sustenance. You know, uh, flounders, um, mullet, and karahu, they all were able to be gathered in one effort. And so, you know, if you got the things going your way, when it tides out, that's karahu. When the tides in, that's mullet. And uh, when it's going out, that's the flounder. So, you know, all in one, what you saw, what you were able to gather, that's experiences of a lifetime. Uh, tika marika. And you learned about those things. You learned about uh, when was the best time to pick certain things. I know the, the time of March is when these uh, time would have come up the river. They come to find the warm waters. The flounder as well come up the rivers in this time there to find the warm water. And it's that whole cycle that has been with us from the beginning of time. And, uh, you know, what a, uh, what a, uh, what a, uh, what a, Important thing it is for us to uh, work in the space of our maramataka, in the space of knowing when the tide comes in, the tide goes out, the moon, how it all connects, and how we connect to that in in order that we, number one, respect and honour that kai, but also choose certain times when it's the best time to collect that kai as well. Well, you know, I have no idea until I became an adult, but all those adult uh, behaviors are born out of the childhood upbringing. So, you know, knowing the seasonal, knowing the, uh, the uh, opportunity when things are at their best, you know, cemetery cleaning was March, and uh, guess what was there? There was watermelon, there was kumara, there was hangi, all those sort of things associated with cemetery cleaning. So, you know, it's like, you do the work, you get the kai. If you don't get the work done, you don't get no kai. So, you know, up to you. <laughs> and it's nice that we still continue down that pathway. And perhaps, although we don't have the maraka like we used to have, we still have the cemetery cleaning. We still have our father come together. We still get to remember our tupuna. We still get to enjoy our whanungatanga as well, John. Oh, look, uh, uh, of course, I'm at that age now. I mean, the day of the slash hook and uh, those sort of things that are inside the cemetery mahi, I'm only leaning on the fence making whakawhanaungatanga work. And that's the only work I do today. But I love it. I love it. <laughs> and they've got the thing of the weed eater, the mower, the, you know, all those modern technology, even the digger that comes in to dig the graves now, John. Oh, I have seen that, and I love it because, you know, we utilize the things that are current with us today. Soon we'll have drones to take us to lands we're not allowed to walk on. We carry the body on the drone and drop it in the hole. (laughs) 
Yes, uh, what a space it will be. I, I'm glad I'm an older person, John, because <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty traditional myself, you know. I like the idea of uh, having, we had, uh, we buried our, our Tukana um, Charlie a, a couple of weeks ago, and these days, it used to be where you had people who were designated with the job of digging the grave. Things have changed now, so families have taken on the responsibility of having people within their whānau who take responsibility of the rangatira who lead that. But also, we had a situation where it was our mokopun from Australia who came back who actually were there to afi the rangatira. And uh, some of them were pretty young. I really love that job because what it is, it's that that continuation and that reconnection, but also it's the the skills that... Um, they gain by that sort of practice? Well, my mother in 2005, she was 85, she was buried in Meheke and Upukura, and my son was 17 when he was brought over from Brisbane. So all his cousins chucked him in the hole, gave him a shovel, and away he went. <laughs> so, you know, those sort of physical experiences uh, stay with them forever, I'd like to think. Okay, John, looking forward to your return home uh, next couple of weeks' time, eh? Yes, uh, we look forward to you sitting in the station with you and rather than do it like we are now, we're going to have a quarter or maybe a cup of that goes with it. Kanuhi, kete kanuhi.